some of the losses, a lot of people complain about the DA in Tswane. I mean, we've still got issues of water in places like Hamanskral. Mm. Sadly, I hear people complain about the DA not managing uh, water infrastructure, of which even in my head, I'm like, I don't know if they fully responsible if it's someone else, because it can't just be since the DA came in. But mm. they're like, look, at some point they were there. They didn't do much. So I, I don't know if you have any losses. You're like, look, these are some of the things where we fell short. Mm. I mean, it's it's one of the reasons you'd say, please bring us back into power because mm. we started this work and we mm. never got to finish it. Are there any losses or issues where you're like, this is where we fell short? Or we've heard these stories and unfortunately, these are actually not yeah. ours. You might put them under us, but they belong to someone else. Well, let me start off with uh, where I think we fall short. Um, and I think this was also a learning curve. Sure. Has been, um, you know, the, the, the sustainability of or the... Um, um, the the strongness of the coalition because I think you know we, we had a turbulent time yeah. you know with the changing of the mayors and I think this is something that we will own up um, not only as a DA but I think all that were part of the coalition must sure. then own up to that to then say at least now we're working in terms of how we can make coalitions work better going forward we were still new we were babies yes we made a lot of mistakes we learned that I think we can okay. own up to the issue of rival so the issue of rival is something that the first report was done. And Rival also talks to uh, the Hamas Kral water, by yeah. the way. The first time that the report came up was 2009. Okay. To say you are heading for a disaster there. Mm. We were not even in government. There was a study done by UNISA. There was a study done by the Pretoria University around there. Mm. And the fact that you also have a, a, a plant, a water treatment plant that was 65 years old. Mm that needed to have been upgraded. You can think about what Pretoria looked like 65 years when this mm -hmm. thing was designed and what it looks like and then where we are currently, Correct. you know? And you realize that there is, uh, there's never been a plan in terms of, um, you know, ad adjusting or even, uh, you know, a a building a bigger Expanding capacity for Expanding for, for bigger capacity. Yeah. Now, that is what has led now to the the the, the kind of water that has flown to, to um, down down uh, Temba to, to, to Amman's crop mm. is that you needed to deal with um, um, Rival mm. and make sure that you're able to then build capacity um, you know, for Rival to be able to treat the amount of water that was flowing there so that you, the amount of water that or the quality of water that is flowing down towards Temba is actually then with a good quality. Sure. So in 2016, 2015, 2016, when we were campaigning, it was something that I campaigned very strongly on. The first year I was in office, we went out and sent out a, a uh, um, what do you call it? We sent out a, uh, a, a an expression of interest mm. to then say, um, you know, we want to see who are people who are willing to then um, come in on this. There was expressions of interest that we received. Good, 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 good responses. I think there was four or five companies that yeah. came up. We wrote to National Treasury and said, look, we don't have the kind of money to be able to roll this thing out because we were looking at a 10 key where we're not only fixing Rayval, but we're fixing the stream, we're fixing timber water treatment plant, we're instilling and refixing all the pipes that are going up to a house in Hammond's Yeah. Companies came and said, can, we can do this and we'll do a 10 key for you. We wrote to National Treasury. National Treasury said, go ahead. Provincial Treasury says, go ahead. Guess where this thing was stopped? who was then the minister um, responsible for water. Why? Because there was no companies that were comrade companies that were part of it, number one. Number two, you didn't have a situation where um, once this thing is fixed, that the ANC was still going to enjoy the support that they were enjoying in Amman's crowd because we were coming to do what they'd failed to do for a number of years. Lastly, so it's almost a form of sabotage as well. We're not going to make the that. DA look good. No, I'll tell you what happened. Yeah. So we, after they said, no, we couldn't do it. We said, okay, now let's go to Temba, where the water is coming in. We started then increasing the tankers that were there. There's uh, something called oxygenation that takes place mm -hmm. where you put water through a process and then there's oxygen that is pumped into there to clarify the water, the quality and all of that and to pump it out. We did, we fixed all of that, the chlorine, uh, the chlorine tanks and all of that. We fixed all of that. And then we, we put some computers that were able to then be used to then monitor, you know, what water, the quality of the water, what is flowing out and all of that. And guess what? When we were testing the water, Two weeks before we were supposed to then open it up, that infrastructure was demolished, was damaged to the last bit. 
And then when we started engaging, we were told, no, some of it could be because of the water tanker companies that were working in the area, because now it means that you're going to have water that is coming out of taps. Then the water tankers are not no, no longer needed in there. There was also another thought that Those said, are, that's a tender as well. Yes, those were tenders that were there. That the were, water that tankers were, that are supplying clean water yes. where there isn't clean water. Now that no, you're they, coming they, to they, fix the water? Now that we're fixing the water. They won't be thing, needed. But, yes. And this infrastructure has now been uh, 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 um, damaged to a point where, you know, you, you had the tankers destroyed, you had um, the monitoring systems then being destroyed. And then we were back to square one. Sorry, before you carry on, I hope I'm not interrupting. Yeah. This, is, this is one of the things I wanted to raise with fixing the trains to Maputo or wherever the case may be, that there are too many politicians and friends making a lot of money from trucks, yeah. even though it's inefficient, yeah. that are on the roads, damaging roads, but they're making money. So they don't have an incentive to allow our railway system to be fixed again. So you've got this clash. Maybe even with ESCOM, the people that are supplying diesel for generators, yeah. they lose money if ESCOM gets fixed yeah. along with so many other people. But then that's when you need intelligence. Sure. South Africa doesn't have a single copper mine, but we are one of the biggest exporters of copper. Where do you think that copper comes from? It's coming from all the scrapyards, from these people who are sending people out to go and dig municipal infrastructure and then yank out all the cables from the ground. But you need to then have, have intelligence that is able to then say, how does the network work? And then how do we then ensure that we're able to then deal with it? So you putting in infrastructure is, you know, uh, a solution. But for you to sustain that, you now need to then say, how do we then bring in safety and security? And how do we bring in an element of, of intelligence that is able to then deal with these things?